to in the u.s you don't have to specialize you don't have to declare a major until mm -hmm. you're like going into your third year and i really like was researching within these two years like what degree do i think i want to go into what field do i think is going to be interesting for me what am i more likely to enjoy what kind of a career will give me like a good job a well-paying job mm -hmm. and so i decided i'm going to pursue psychology you've graduated mm -hmm. You have a bachelor's degree. You've done your first job. What proceeded after that? So the journey started um, actually very early on. Um, you know, when I was even still debating what I wanted to do with my life. So. Uh, before I even went to Washington State University for my undergrad, I used to work in this place and there used to be this nurse that, you know, I was also considering nursing and things like that. There used to be this one nurse that I was like, you young girls, like there was a, a, a few of us young ones over there and we were just, you know, we were working as caregivers and she would talk to us, she would be like, you know you're very bright you're in school right now why don't you pursue pharmacy um i think she knew of someone maybe in her family or had seen somebody that became a pharmacist and you know i guess she Their thought I, she she thought it was a good thing so she started talking to us about it like it was it would be very often she would just be saying oh you should pursue pharmacy and I, i'd never heard of like pharmacy before i know about like pharmacy like mm -hmm. um like the you know there are pharmacists there are chemists chemists and things like that but i never considered it so like she planted something in my mind and i think trying to figure out what i wanted to do it became an option for me in my head so when i was doing my elimination and like just trying to figure out what would work for me and what i wanted to pursue it presented as the thing that would work best for what i was looking for which was a good job um no which was like sa a career that would provide me a great work life balance work balance is that how you say it? yeah work life work, balance yeah I, yeah i wanted a career that would provide me a great work life balance and so all the other um, careers that I was looking into did not seem to have that option for me and did not seem to be as appealing to me as pharmacy was. Mm. And so I ended up choosing pharmacy. Of all the careers. Of all the career guy, careers, guys. Of all of them. I was like, yep, that's the one I want to do. <laughs> so how was pharmacy school? Oh, my God. <laughs> guys, pharmacy school was hard okay it was hard i worked my tail off in that school <laughs> i really really worked hard it was hard and it was it was challenging in a lot of different ways okay. well, is there a time that you reached and you're like i think i made a mistake uh -huh. and i need to go back because this is too hard for me <laughs> and maybe you are like i think these doctors are saying things i don't understand or professors i don't know what kind of people teach pharmacists okay then you're like oh this doctor is just saying things i don't understand <laughs> i think i should go pray to my god and just exit this class <laughs> <laughs> the challenges begin before you even start pharmacy school mm. that is the truth because to get into pharmacy school first there are some prerequisites that you have to meet mm. so these are classes like your biologies your chemistry your math your biochemistry classes that you have to finish so every school has different prerequisites mm. and so what you do is you try to match what you're taking with what the prerequisites for the school that you want to go to requires or like you try to do majority because you also don't know which school you're going to be accepted into and which one you don't have you you won't be as accepted into so the way you get into pharmacy school is through like being you apply and then you interview and then you get accepted so to be accepted you have to have fulfilled all the prerequisites that you need for that class and then um you do an application and you know you have to have at least some some kind of work experience or volunteer experience or you know something that shows them that why you want to be in that field and that you tried something in that field and it seems like it's going to be a good fit for you so that 
in itself is very challenging and then you get you apply and then you wait to hear for an in about an interview then they interview you and then after they interview you you wait for the letter or the email that either you've ever been accepted or not accepted so i'm assuming you got the letter that you are accepted yes i did what was your reaction oh i was actually not that i didn't believe in myself but i was actually shocked when i found out that they accepted me <laughs> you didn't see yourself being accepted no, or what there was so many of us there's always so many there of us so... in this world we are like what six no, billion there was so many how many of us? are we and the thing is they always say oh like like in my year um our class was like 120 and they said they got like over a thousand applications my guys let that not scare you if it's your it's your choice <laughs> most likely it's going to be yours there used to be another exam that mm -hmm. you have to do it's like for those people that want to go to medical school they have to do the mcat and for pharmacy school what is mcat is like oh for pharmacy school is pcat is like pharmacy i even forget what what it stands for but like it's like a pre-qualification exam that you have to do mm -hmm. And then you have to score a certain number, a certain number of points for them to even consider you. Okay, so most schools ask for that. In our school, the school that I went to also required that. And until that year that I was applying and they were like, oh, we're going to do away with the PCAT, so we don't require it anymore. So, so you guys got a through pass. You're like, there's the door. Let me tell you. I had already like <laughs> I already had the book with me mm. to study and I was going to study that summer and then do the exam like the end of summer and then put in my application. Mm. The moment they scrapped off that PCAT because it was the only thing holding me. Mm. I just put in my application and I was even able to do early interviewing because sometimes they do early interviews and early interviews is good because it's like your top choice of school right so you interview with them and you know early on if you get in or not and then if you don't then you can go ahead to apply to other schools so i was like okay i'm gonna do this early application thing mm -hmm. and then find out if i get in so that's why i was like because i did it so quick i was like okay just let me just go ahead and do it i didn't think that it was gonna be that fast oh nice yeah so <laughs> so here you are you're in and <sighs> I, I just want to know was there a time that you looked at whoever was teaching you, the doctor, the mm -hmm. professor, mm -hmm. and you are not sure whether this is the right choice you made? Oh, yeah. The first, first classes, um, I was like, uh-uh, I don't think so. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let me tell you something about medications, okay? Their names do not make sense. Like it's names you've never had before they have no reference in your brain it's like most of them somebody just put the alphabets in a little thing and then just pulled out letters and then was like yeah mm -hmm. let's just call that medication that. this yes mm -hmm. and then on top of that medications have two names each so there's a generic name and a brand name and both of them are like that and there's no correlation for most of them like there's no like at this medication at you may i have like, a question what the heck you know in kenya mm -hmm. we when you go to a chemist mm -hmm. because in kenya we have chemists mm -hmm. and you ask for medication they tell you do you want the generic or the original does it make sense with the names that you've just said so, i don't know so the generic is the original and then there's the brand wait the generic is the original mm -hmm. but in kenya we are told this is generic and gen generic is usually cheaper than the original the original is more expensive oh the original is the that's the way they okay i'm just okay. saying because okay. that's the way we do it in kenya so <laughs> if you're in kenya you know you go to a chemist and they tell you oh you want the generic am i unataka original the original in kenya is what is brand name here mm. because brand name is more expensive generic is cheaper so I, I wanted also to know like was the class full was it like a number of people who chose a uh, pharmacy school and were people dropping out like as you go by because mm. some of these courses are very hard they are very um, there are people like i said um goes through the first lesson second lesson fourth lesson fourth month and they get nothing yeah. they're like mm -mm. 
Mm-mm. My brain has shut down. It has it, it has is refused. it has chosen either <laughs> something else like music, agriculture or <laughs> or just chilling. Oh <laughs> my god. Let me tell you guys, everyone, uh we were all going through like challenges in that school. A good number of people in that class, our class class of 2020, there was 120 of us. Um and most of us just had like the same classes, you know. Um so in this program, the classes are pre-selected for you. You already know first year you need to do this, second year you need to do this, third year you need to do this and fourth year. It's four years of school, guys, which is another challenge. That's a very long time to be a student on top of being a student like another four years before that. So eight years in total. Gosh, yeah, when I think about it, I'm just like <laughs> So guys, 8 oh, years you're yeah. still in school. Yeah. Reading, trying to look for a future for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it was hard at the beginning. I th- I think my first year the hardest thing was just to to understand what I was doing and the way of studying because it's also different from how I used to study in undergrad because mm. the also the way of testing was different. So in our program, we had this test every 2 weeks. Um so every second Monday we would have exams and we would have exams for like all the classes that we're taking back to back to back to back. So that was very difficult because it means you're reading for all of your classes mm-hmm. then taking the test one after the other after the other after the other and like you just have to shift the way that you study and this the way you study for exams in pharmacy school it's very different because you're trying to cram names that you've never had before um you're trying to understand like pharmacology you're trying to understand you know you have all these other classes like uh, it was just a lot all at once like to begin with but then like you get into a groove right um you start making friends in our class like there was a lot of people and then you start finding you know a few people here and there there was a few africans too which was good because then you can bond quickly and then start working together um so i found people that i can study with and that really 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 helped me because we also had to score at least an 80% in every single exam that i did in that school what yeah 80% 80% guys like 80% Guys, please go through your <sighs> transcripts. Look at it very carefully. If you you can get 80 all through, you are good to be a pharmacist. Oh my god, it was not easy. Sometimes you don't pass the exam. And if you yeah, don't it's get so hard. Yeah, if you don't get 80%, you get another chance like the next Monday to repeat to do it again and uh, hopefully you pass that time and then if you don't pass that time at the end of the semester you're going to get another chance to do that exam again and if you don't pass that exam at that time you can proceed you can move forward so were you able to get 80% all through i was able i never had to repeat any courses or anything hey. like that oh wait did i say that too quickly <laughs> No, I I'm not saying I never not passed as any class. I did repeat some of the class, some of not classes, some of the exams. Um some of them I repeated. I did it like the second time, but like for the most part like I mean, I finished school, so here we are. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. So that's one of the biggest challenges like just switching your mind over to like okay this is professional school the passing mark is so high and you have to hit it every time and it's coming quickly in quick succession like every two weeks you have four exams every two weeks you have four exams and each one of them carries the same weight it's not like a cat at the cat has 20% and another one all of them if you do five exams all of them carry the same weight there's no finals there's no nothing like all of them are equally important and they just st- they are stand alone so you have to pass each one yeah i'm just surprised why you didn't know this like getting 80% all through and it is every every two weeks every four two weeks. weeks every two weeks every you have four exams mm-hmm. <sighs> and sometimes you have even so that those four exams are like the core exams so sometimes you have like other classes like um we used to have like a health 
what was the name of it like a practical kind of thing like a, a practice more of like practicing your skills mm -hmm. class and we also had exams for that so you had you had to show your skills they would check your skills and see if you know how to do this if you know how to do that and we also had labs actually i almost forgot and we we would also have lab tests so did you enjoy that period that you're in school for four years <laughs> was it enjoyable we having uh, in mind that you have every two weeks you have four exams waiting for you were you enjoying anything i was enjoying the weekends that i didn't have exams on monday i was really enjoying those weekends because the school that i went to was uh, far away so i would go back to seattle at that time and like just hang out you know party with my friends and just forget that i'm in school that i'm stressed out about school and you know just have a good weekend and then sunday evening drive four hours and then go back to school mode so were you discriminated against now that you came from africa oh in school yeah um no i i can't say that i had um any specific cases of discrimination mm. just maybe one time someone someone was surprised that i was i went on to the next grade to the next class like the next year and uh we met somewhere and they were like oh wait you're in the same class as us i was like yeah we've been in the same class since first year and they were like oh i thought you remained in like second year or something so i don't know why they said that but that's like, so bad yeah but you know yeah i mean but other than that like i never had any and that was not like a strong case of like discrimination maybe they just didn't think i'm bright enough or something so did you graduate oh yes because i heard you talk about class of 2020 oh yeah and 2020 we had a pandemic yeah we had a pandemic but i graduated how did you graduate i got my paper what do you mean i finished my classes i did all my i did all my oh my god I forgot the name of the things that we did during our last year. <laughs> okay, so your last la, la, <laughs> your last year of school is just you get sent out resi not residency. Oh my god, how can I even forget that name? I I, I can't help you. Okay. I don't know what you you are looking for. Anyway, just keep it. So you graduated right now i feel like i have to find it uh, okay let's uh, give her some time you know <laughs> pharmacists have a lot they've been cramming all these medicines all these years so sometimes these words may escape them oh my god yeah mm -hmm. okay so the last year of school is basically you get placed in different institutions and in different kinds of settings like a community pharmacy a hospital an independent pharmacy so different places that you can go and get experience so that depending on where you land as a job at least you have some experience of what to expect from there and mm -hmm. those also count towards you graduating or not graduating because you get um you get graded by your preceptor whoever is teaching you over there they give a report of how you did and and you know that kind of a thing and they send it back to the school and the school grades it for you oh. so yeah you have to pass so i finished all my classes i passed all my classes i passed all of those external internships mm. and i graduated with a doctor yeah. or pharmacy degree <laughs> and so here we are you're looking at Dr. Mambo. <laughs> yeah. We, we are letting that sink in first. <laughs> so guys, uh, this is... Uh, Why is my congratulations? <laughs> here I am. So guys, this is Dr. Mambo. And from now on, please, you can refer to her as a doctor in the comment section. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. so when she says Funny. she's a psychologist and now she's a pharmacist, now you know. When you ask yeah. those questions and she's asking those questions in her instagram stories make sure you follow her on instagram because she, she sometimes asks these questions and helps people who have issues so yeah you are you've graduated mm -hmm. congratulations thank you yeah thank you. i was actually present to receive the certificate okay no i actually i, I just <laughs> oh. saw, i just saw the certificate no that's a story for another day that's a story for another right day. so there was the pandemic as he mentioned so i have to say this so i can get it out of my chest because i think it still hurts a little bit just a little bit so 
the pandemic started February of 2020, okay? And we were here very pumped. February of 2020, you're like, yes, I'm gonna graduate in May. Can't wait to walk across the stage and like get my degree. Oh, Corona had other ideas. So they were like, oh guys, I don't think we're gonna be able to have a ceremony for you guys because of what's going on. And they canceled our graduation, guys. They canceled it. So we never had a graduation ceremony, but we graduated, we got our, our papers and everything. So we had all these plans that he would be here by, the, by my graduation. Actually, he was gonna land the week before my graduation so he could be here for my graduation and then we can start our beautiful life together. But <laughs> COVID had other plans. Yeah, so I stayed home for six months. He watched me virtually. I, I hope you guys have watched those series that we talk yeah. about how we stayed at home. Yeah. So I stayed home, watched her uh, on some virtual thing. Yeah. Because we had a link. Was it on YouTube? No, there was a link that oh, yeah. she shared. Yeah. And I could just click and watch. And I also read the watched names. it from there and read my own name from there. Yeah, it was it was actually sad, but you know, the most important thing is that you know you get your degree and that that happened but you know there was there's also that excitement of like bringing all the people that have supported you through the journey together to like just celebrate that moment because i felt like pharmacy school was so challenging um it was not easy like going through all the classes um going through you know it challenges you it breaks you sometimes sometimes you feel like you can't do it mm. and then you just have to pick yourself up again and there are people that are with you throughout you know that journey and you it, it's just nice to have an opportunity to bring all of them together and say thank you guys for this we have done it because it's not just it wasn't a solo effort even though even if i was the one taking the exams and doing all that i had an army of people supporting me and you know if you're watching this thank you so much for supporting me it really meant a lot <laughs> yeah. yeah so here you are mm -hmm. you are now a doctor yeah are you ready to practice when you get this degree oh gosh or no. this doctorate degree oh yeah let's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so to become a pharmacist so when you when you graduate with your doctor of pharmacy degree you have graduated as a doctor of pharmacy but you're not yet a licensed pharmacist okay mm -hmm. so you have to do two exams to become a licensed pharmacist and um that's the naplex and also you have to do a low exam for the for the state that you want to be practicing in Mm. So after all of that struggle, you have the naplex staring right at you. Mm -hmm. Come on, baby. Come on. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> and guys, if you see the book that she's talking about, oh I, wish, I wish we carried it. It's somewhere in the house. Yeah. It's this big, this yep. thick. So everything you've learned in four years, put together in one thick book and um, you study it and then, you know, you go do the exam, which is like basically asking you about all the things you've studied from year one to the last year of pharmacy school and let me tell you guys it's not easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can attest to that because i think i was here present, oh yeah finally and i had yeah. to fly out of this state <laughs> just to give you time to, to be able to concentrate oh, so there's different types of questions like multiple choice select all that apply it's mm -hmm. 225 questions oh my god for yeah. six hours mm -hmm. did you pass ah guys i <laughs> passed the first time i'm telling you i can't <laughs> I remember when I was checking my my results, you were with me, right? I couldn't check. Actually, he checked for me because I was just like... She was trembling. I was so scared because if I don't pass the first time... Mm. Oh gosh, I woke up the baby. Oh no. If you don't pass the first time, then you have to do it again. And I could not imagine myself studying again. So I was like, oh my God, please, please, please. And then you checked for me and... Yeah, she passed. Yay. Flying colors. We actually celebrated. I think yeah. I have I think I have a video in my Instagram where she was dancing and yeah. I actually said she passed. Yeah. Yeah. So I so, passed mm -hmm. and I also passed my law exam and that means I got a license. So I am a licensed pharmacist. <laughs> so guys, uh, from today, 
refer to her as Dr. Mambo. Oh my God. No, guys, you can call me Elle. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, guys, we would like to know uh, how you got your first job, of course. Mm -hmm. And that's in maybe the next video that we'll yeah. do with you. Yeah. Then maybe find out more, like what are the challenges in the new job? What you do as a pharmacist? What you expected when you are a student? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. we'll find all that in the next video and we'll have to end the video at this point. Yeah. Guys, there's so much to share. Mm -hmm. I don't I didn't even think I would be so excited to talk about this, but like I don't think I've ever like given an encounter of like my experience. So I'm very happy to share this with you guys. If you have any questions, if you're considering going to pharmacy school, if you are in pharmacy school, if you are wondering if it's the right choice for you, just ask me. I can tell you honestly uh, what my experience was and what I recommend or not recommend. And yeah, we'll talk more in the next video. Yeah. yeah. So guys, like, share, subscribe, and please put on the post notification. Bell. Bell. Yeah, so that you're notified the next time that we post. And guys, follow us on Instagram. And if you have any questions, if you want to share some of your life stories or situations, <laughs> you can send them to my Instagram or Ellen Nick Instagram. And yeah, let's see. Let's start something there. Yeah, for me, just follow me. I won't uh, be able to answer some of your <laughs> tough questions, but I can forward them to her. And one more question I wanted to ask her. Huh? Yeah. So how did you fund your education? Because pharmacy school is very expensive. Oh, it is very expensive, guys. And that's a whole new video that we can do. But I took loans. I have lots of student debt, guys. So I, I think one, one day we'll just talk about student loans in the US yeah. and um, what they do to you later on after you're done with school mm -hmm. and what you should maybe do mm -hmm. before you actually get yourself into a student loan or if you want to get into a student loan, what you should expect. So we'll, oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that video. Oh, if yeah. you guys like it, um, just say in the comment section so that we know. Yeah, peace. Thanks. Twenty kazi. Yeah, let's do it. Guys, see you, and that's where we live. Alrighty. Peace. Bye, guys. So, like, share, and subscribe, guys, and watch out for our next video. Love you.